That was very beautifully done, Diana. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of our musicians. Uh, tonight, I don't know if you came knowing what I was going to speak on, uh, but uh, I, I, I want to begin by just saying that the title is Christianity and Islam, and uh, I, don't, I don't think that uh, on, my, on a personal level, I haven't talked to a lot of missionaries, um, you know, Muslims are not our enemies. Um, and fear always causes us to uh, um, react poorly. It'll, it'll turn to hate. And um, um, our missionaries have noted many, many miracles that have happened among Muslims in Muslim nations where many people have come, come to Christ. They have uh, dreams, uh, former Muslims that didn't know much about Jesus, um, literally appeared to them, uh, miracle after miracle story told. And these are regular people like you that God sent to nations. And um, God cares if a person's open and looking, God will reveal himself in the way he chooses. And for all of that, I don't really understand it. On a personal note, I had the opportunity about a month ago to lead a, a, a mother uh, of, of, of a young woman who is Muslim to Christ. Uh, the daughter uh, had as an adult, and uh, and I spent some time visiting with her after she also received Christ, and um, and I believe I believe that's good because I believe that Jesus Christ is God, and He's the one true God, and that there's no other name by which a person can be saved but the name of Jesus Christ, and all of my comments here are not to arm you with information to to um, uh, what, what do I want to say to uh, use against someone, but to deepen your faith in what the Bible has to say um, about God, who God is, who Jesus is, and about Christianity. And um, so many people uh, choose, you know, here, here's the thing. There are people of every uh, religious belief that are great people, good people. Uh, and there are people who... who who are under, under the, the umbrella of the broader sense Christianity, who are really good people, but don't have a living relationship with Christ. Now, I'm saying that not thinking of a person because otherwise I'd be judging that person. That's not my intent. I'm not thinking of a person. I'm just saying quite sure that, that uh, there are people of many faiths who don't follow it sincerely and, and with, with all of their heart and devotion. And... Um, I, I uh, personally have witnessed to, to many people who are of the Muslim faith, uh, and, I, and I find them to be very delightful people, uh, loving people, people that would say the same thing that you say about uh, the, the smaller slice of the overall population of Muslims that are jihadist, uh, that they are embarrassed that they do that, and they're not for that, and t terrorist acts and things like that. And... Um, so uh, I, I say that, you know, I've traveled different places and in nations where there's a number of Muslims and I witness everywhere I go. In fact, let me tell you a little story. This morning I had a family of six come up to me and I was in the Merle Hay Mall and met this family and shared with Christ. They were telling me a little bit about their thing. And from our conversation, they said, I, I want to come to your church. They didn't say that. I, I didn't, they, they must have thought it because they told me today from our conversation, we wanted to come to your church, and they showed up today. And it kind of shocked me in a way, because I, I, I talk to a lot of people, uh, and uh, you know, I'm open with, with what I do. Uh, I'm open with the fact that I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm open with the fact of what I believe. At least I believe it, and I'm not a hypocrite to say that um, you know, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe what the Bible has to say. And on a different note, um, you know, when we take the Bible and the Quran and we look at them side by side, they're different. But the one thing about the Bible is the Bible, many of its stories and claims are historically documented by secular historians. In fact, all about Jesus is documented. He lived at the same time many other people that we accept fact of history lived. Alexander the, the Great, uh, another, another age, not exactly that same time, but Herod the Great and other people that lived, and we accept the historical record. 
But some people don't want to accept the record of Jesus because his record is miraculous and is claimed to be uh, God and Messiah uh, uh, unless you know the prophecies forthright that God would send his son, that there would be a virgin born, that there would be and where it would be, and all of the prophecies hundreds of years before they came to pass in the New Testament, then you may take this book and go, well, it's, you know, they differ. How do I know which one to believe? And uh, um, the, in, hist- in historical record, we see people that uh, even that were against Christ and said he did things by the power of devil or by magic is quoted in history uh, to like raise himself from the dead is the accusation. And even though he, ra- he, he raised others from the dead, even though he healed people, they, 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 not only the religious leaders, but others who, who didn't re- receive him, they accused him of doing it by the power of the devil, by Beelzebub. And you see that in Scripture, and you see that not only in Bible Scripture, but in history writings. In fact, one notable quote from history said, we know that Jesus rose from the dead because so many people saw him, and it's a fact that you would be ridiculous, and I'm paraphrasing, ridiculous not to believe, but, but he did it by the magic he learned when he, was, when he was Egypt. But then if you do the history with Herod the Great, and when he came back and do the history and on Jesus, you know that as a small boy, he was back, he was back from Egypt where he had fled uh, from wicked King Herod, Herod the Great, and he was back in Nazareth where he grew up as a small boy. So he, he would have been there no later than four years old at the very tops five, probably four years old. So I just say that to say, but when you decide about what you believe between Christianity and Islam or Buddhist or uh, agnostic or atheistic or whatever else, you know, at least use the same intelligence with history and read ancient history on this that you would anything else and look into it and see what you find out. The first scripture I want to bring to your attention is 1 John 2, 23. John was the John the Beloved, one of the disciples, and he wrote uh, the, go- the Gospel of John, and he wrote 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, two little books right before uh, Jude and Revelation at the end of the New Testament. And in 1 John 2, 23, he says, no one who denies the Son has the Father, no one who denies the Son has the Father, Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So think of what he's saying. He's talking about Jesus, not denying him, not denying who he says he is, not denying. And if if they have Jesus the Son, they have God the Father. And um, uh, if they deny him, rather, they don't have the Father. If they acknowledge him, they do have the Father. That's all it's saying. Now, Christianity, I'm going to stay close to my notes because I don't want to misspeak something because, honestly, I'm embarrassed about how some Christians talk about, speak about, um, hurl insults uh, about uh, Islam and or the Muslim faith. Uh, You know, God has called us to love, and He's called us to speak truth with love and not hatred. Hatred and fear are not a part of who we are. If we really believe what this book says, we have nothing to fear. The perfect, in the, 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 it's, the Bible says uh, that uh, there is no fear in the perfect love of God. So when God fills us with his love, you shouldn't be living your life full of fear. Christianity and Islam are the, so I'm staying close to my notes because I want to say things specifically so you don't hear something different than what I'm meaning to say. Christianity and Islam are the world's top two religions. In terms of numbers, Christianity first and most uh, in Islam is second as far as numbers are concerned. But numbers aren't proof of truth. And many people included in those numbers are not very committed to their religion, including Christianity, as you know. And uh, still the numbers show that Christianity and Islam are the most popular religions in the world and, 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 and powerful faiths. So the way Christians and Muslims deal with each other is very important, isn't it? Extremely important. The number of people involved in both of those religions is so huge, and feelings have been so strong, and the history of conflict so painful that it'd be foolish of uh, it'd be foolish and dangerous to provoke each other needlessly, and that's surely not my intent. And at the same time, it's also foolish and dangerous to pretend there's not much difference 
between Christianity and Islam. And my first point is the word insulting. Because I believe it's insulting to both Christianity and to Islam, according to their books they follow, to say they're one and the same and or they serve the same God. After uh, the, uh, the Sep September 11 terrorist attacks on the United States, there were some church officials who were so eager to get along with Muslims that they talked as though Muhammad, the chief uh, prophet of Islam, and Jesus, the central figure of Christianity, simply offer different paths to the same God. Uh, Nathan Baxter, he was the, the dean of the, uh, of the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., he addressed a prayer to quote unquote the God of Abraham, Muhammad, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that may sound like a nice prayer that includes Christianity and Islam, but in fact it actually excludes both and is insulting to both. No real Muslim believes that God is the Father of Jesus. Muslims don't believe Jesus is God's Son and do not believe He's the Lord of the universe. Muhammad taught that such belief is wicked and it's blasphemous. And meanwhile, there's no Christian that follows the word that believes in the God of Muhammad. Muhammad rejected the Holy Trinity, which means he denied the God worshipped by Christians. Muhammad denied the God the, the God the Son, that he came to the earth as a human in the person of Jesus. He denied that. So if a church official prays to the God of Muhammad and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it means probably that guy's a little bit theologically liberal or in the name of getting along and being kind is trying to just, you know, not offend anybody. And, uh, and, and I can sure appreciate the heart of that. Um, but it, that's inventing your own religion. It's not, you know, it's not... Islam, and it's not Christianity. It's inventing the religion. Such people who claim to respect both religions, but they don't really believe either one. Now, I'm, I'm eager to get along as a Christian with Muslims, and I don't want to, but I don't want to insult Christianity, and I don't want to insult the faith of Islam by offering a mix that betrays both. Instead, let's just be honest about the differences, because there are differences. Let's not attack or kill each other over those differences or hate each other or fear each other, but let's recognize that the differences are real. It's wrong to equate the God of Christianity with the God of Islam, and I want to look at some key differences between the two. First off, just let me just say, believing that they serve the same God and that I hope you understand the idea that it's insulting both the Christians and Muslims is insulting. But secondly, it's insulting to both. But secondly, I want to look at some common ground that Christianity and, and Islam has together. There's some things that they that they they have common. And uh, first off, both religions are monotheistic, insisting there are not many gods but one God. Both religions reject the pagan belief in various gods and goddesses. They both reject the pantheistic belief that all things, like this here, are God, or at least part of God. I believe Hindus uh, believe that. Both also insist there is one all-powerful, all-knowing being with no beginning or ending and who rules over all things. Islam, like Christianity, teaches divine creation they reject random evolution. The world and the things in it are products of intelligent design, they believe, just like Christians, not mindless chance. And this is plain, I believe, to anyone who will look at the evidence. But unlike agnostics or atheists, Islam agrees with Christianity that all things begin with the supernatural creative act of God. Islam stands with Christianity on many social issues, too. They oppose homosexuality in the sense that it's not God's intent in the beginning and, and in general, abortion. Islam emphasizes honesty in business. Muslims are not supposed to, according to the Quran, they're not supposed to sell blemished products, produce, 
They're not supposed to uh, cheat in weights and in measurements to hoard or to conceal, hide a products. And the quote unquote, it says to conceal uh, a product's uh, faults. And there are many other ethical rules in the Quran that are similar to statements in the Bible. So it's good to note that there is common ground between Christianity and Islam. But not only is there common ground, there are very, very deep, the third thing, deep differences. Differences about, one, what God is really like. Two, about who Jesus is. Three, about what Jesus accomplished. And also about how to be right with God and to enjoy eternity with God, everlasting blessing. So the difference is about who is God, about his deity. So what is God like? There was a student at a Christian college in, uh, who wrote uh, a college publication about his perceptions of Islam after listening to Muslim visitors to the campus. This young man somehow got the impression that the God of Christianity is the same as the God of Islam. He wrote that Muslims pray five times a day to the same wonderful, merciful God that I serve. And that's a common idea in the world today and in some circles, but it's wrong. Christians and Muslims do not worship the same God. They do not worship the same God. Christianity teaches that there is one God who is a union of three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the oneness of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is such that it is wrong to speak of three gods. We serve one God. There's only one God, an eternal union of love in the Holy Trinity. When the Bible says God is love, it's not just because he's loving toward us, but it's because God's inner being is characterized by the eternal love of God, the eternal love that unites Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are one, the Father, the Son, one. Love, love me, Jesus said, as I love the Father, love one another. They are one. Islam believes in one God, but not in the God who Christians love and worship. Muhammad fiercely opposed the Christian belief that Jesus is the eternal Son of God. He didn't believe that. He opposed the Christian belief that Jesus had the same divine nature as God the Father. Muhammad denied that the Holy Spirit is a divine person along with the Father and the Son. In fact, in the Quran, chapter 572 to 75, which I'll read in a minute, it threatens painful punishment in hell for those who say that Christ is God and believe in the Trinity. One Muslim writer said the doctrine of the Trinity, equality with Allah, and sonship are repudiated as blasphemies. And I quote from Quran 5, 72 to 75, they do blaspheme who say Allah is Christ the son of Mary, but said Christ, O children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Whoever joins other gods with Allah, Allah will forbid him the garden, and the fire will be his abode. There will for the wrongdoers be no one to help. They do blaspheme who say Allah is one of the three in a trinity. For there is no God except one Allah. If they desist not from their word, in other words, don't stop of this blasphemy, verily a grievous penalty will befall the blasphemers among them. Why turn they not to Allah and seek his forgiveness? For Allah is oft forgiving most merciful, Christ the son of Mary was no more than a messenger. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. His mother was a woman of truth. They had both to eat their daily food. See how Allah doth make his signs clear to them. Yet see in what ways they are deluded away from the truth. That's rather clear, isn't it? I'm reading from the Quran, it's not my opinion. Um, I'm reading what it says in their book. The Bible's, was that on the screen? Could you read that okay? I, I put that up because I realized me reading that might be difficult. 
Uh, the Bible is not describing the God of Muhammad when it says of Jesus, and I quote in Hebrews 1, uh, to, uh, 1 verse 3, this is, this is, you know, let me say it again, the Bible's not describing the God of Muhammad when it says about Jesus this, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact rep representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. This God whom Christians worship is not the same as the God of Muhammad. I am not trying, I'm not trying to insult anybody, really, truly, when I say this. I'm simply stating a fact. And a, a loyal Muslim would tell you the same thing. When I worship the Holy Trinity and revere Jesus Christ as God, fully God as though he were not man at all, and fully man as though he were not God at all, I'm doing something that no Quran-believing Muslim is permitted to do. So we don't need to pretend that we all worship the same God. It's just not true, those that really know their faith. Both Muslim and Christian alike would agree with what I'm saying. So it's not being said to insult the Christian. It's not being said to insult the Muslim. I, cr I cringe when at church, church leaders at civic events try to pretend they worship the same God as non-Christian worship. It's, uh, and... and, and uh, uh, as non-Christians worship. They worship the same God as, as people that aren't Christians worship. And it, it makes me cringe. I get, I get the fact that there's been a lot of tension uh, because of, of, of jihadists and, and others. And, you know, um, I, I get that. And I, and I appreciate the heart of wanting to get along and be kind. But, but I, I think that I think that both Muslim and Christian alike can surely accept the fact that we agree, we, we, we believe something different. Now, now, I understand there are those that are jihadists that look at us as heathens and enemies, but I would sure hope that none of you would look at them with such eyes but look at them like you would anyone, as God would, and through Jesus' eyes, with love and kindness and mercy, desiring that they would know the truth. At a memorial service, just to give you an example, in Yankee Stadium after 9-11, the, 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 it was for the people who died in the terrorist attacks. There were le leaders of different religions, and some of these leaders were supposed to be Christians, but they didn't give much sign of it. They prayed to a vague God and said nothing of Jesus at all. None of them did. Someone sang a, a hymn to Mary, you know, Ave Maria, which is fine, but nobody saying anything to Jesus or mentioned Jesus to Christ. A priest ended his prayer by saying, Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us, but he didn't mention Jesus, nor did any other Christian clergy. Apparently, it was considered okay to pray to Mary, but maybe it seemed too offensive to pray in Jesus' name in the presence of those who don't accept Jesus Christ as God. But my respect goes to the Muslim that was at that same meeting because he was honest as he stood before the crowd. A Muslim cleric at the same event didn't hide his convictions at all. He declared repeatedly, Muhammad is the prophet of Allah without embarrassment or apology. I don't share his belief in that. And I surely don't believe what he says there, but his honest declaration uh, is somewhat respectful here. I mean, it is respectful that he was honest, but those church officials who didn't have the courage or conviction to mention Jesus, the name by which anyone going to heaven is saved, for there's no other name the Bible says given in heaven and earth that a man can be saved other than the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ the Messiah. And they, wouldn't, they didn't mention him, much less declare that he is God and the one way to life. So as a Christian, I don't pray to the same God as a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu. I pray to a triune God, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and uh, who come to us in the person of Jesus Christ and put on humanity, humbled himself and died on the cross. And anyone doesn't accept Christ as the Son of God then he and I don't pray to the same God. I'm going to say that again. Anyone that doesn't accept Jesus Christ as God, 
and prays to God. He and I are not praying to the same God. So there's differences about who God is, but secondly, there's differences of who Jesus is, uh, deep differences. Muslims believe that Jesus was born of a virgin through a great miracle. They believe that Jesus was a prophet. They even speak of, in some sort of sense, Jesus as Messiah. But they don't accept Jesus as Son of God with all divine attributes of God the Father. Anyone who claims to accept Jesus as a prophet but rejects him as God is not accepting Jesus at all. They're accepting only their own made-up version of Jesus. And the Bible contains a lot of statements from Jesus himself and from his closest friends clearly identifying himself as God. Muslims dismiss such statements as falsehoods that crept into the Bible over the centuries. They say that the Quran and not the Bible is the final authority when it comes to understanding who Jesus is. But think about that. The authors of the Bible knew Jesus personally. They saw him in action. They heard him speak. They enjoyed close friendship with him, and they wrote exactly what the Lord did and told them to write. Muhammad, on the other hand, he lived 600 years after Jesus was on earth, and he never knew Jesus at all. So why believe someone who was so far from, removed from Jesus rather than the eyewitness accounts and his closest friends? The apostle John was one of his dearest friends and closest friends, the friends of Jesus, and, um, he, you know, when he was on earth. And, and, and John, John heard Jesus say, I and the Father are one. He heard him. John heard Jesus' enemies accuse him of blasphemy and snarl at him. And, and from John 10, he says, they said to him, Jesus, you're a mere man. You, a mere man, rather, claim to be God. You, a mere man, claim to be God. But Jesus proved his claim by rising from the dead, accepting the worship of a disciple who exclaimed, one who was doubting, one who told others that said they saw him, they didn't believe either, until Jesus appeared to Thomas, the, called Doubting Thomas, and he bowed and put his hands in his side and on his, on his nail prints, touched his side and said, my Lord and my God. John was a witness to these things. He wrote them down. And his purpose in writing about Jesus, he said, and I want you to turn to this, John chapter 20, verse 31. He says, but these are written, he's writing this out, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There's the life that's in his name, that Jesus, the Christ, is the Son of God. And then many people did believe in Jesus as God, as God and God's Son, and, but others already in John's time was denying that. They were, that, you know, just like Muhammad, they were doing something similar, and they said that Jesus was special but denied that he was eternal God and who came to earth in human flesh. And John, under God's direction, and responded by saying, want, look at, turn over to 1 John, and I want you to get there because we're going to look at several verses. If you have your Bible electronically or whatever, go to the end of the New Testament to 1 John and look at it with your own eyes. It helps you to look at it. If you have a Bible, otherwise watch the screen. So he says this in 1 John verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. He says this. And he's talking about, uh, he's, talk, he's, he's warning against Antichrist, and they're having this discussion. And then in verse 22, he says, who is the liar? And then he answers, it is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. Verse 23, no one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges son, the Son has the Father also. So it's clear there, in my opinion. And then if you, about who Jesus is. Um, and then if you turn to uh, uh, also chapter 4 of the same book, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 15, 
we're going to see there are deep, deep differences, not only about who God is, who Jesus is, but about what God was like and who Jesus is, but differences about eternal life. In chapter 4, verse 15, we read this. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. If he acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And this has to do with eternal life. Jesus is the Son of God. God has given, and then in chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, uh, it's going on and jumping ahead. And this is the record that God, let me, let me read it in the, uh, in the NIV, sorry. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. and That's eternal life. And what does it say? And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So there's a big difference in being in Islam and Christianity right there. And then jump down to verse 20 of that same chapter, 1 John 5. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Do you see that? This is what I believe. That I'm, you think you're saying amen because you believe it too. That's good. So, so Christianity, just listen, here's what I'm my point. Christianity accepts that Jesus is God and trusts the death and the resurrection of Jesus as the basis of forgiveness and eternal life. Jesus, who died on the cross to pay the penalty of our sin for all who trust in him, they believe that. They believe Jesus rose again to give joyous eternal life to people, to his people, and that this salvation is a free gift of God to all who will believe and trust themselves and come to Christ in relationship. Christianity teaches this, but listen, Islam denies all of it. They deny, they, it, it's, it's, it's not that way at all. It's, and th this is a deep difference. As one Muslim put it, and I quote, Muslims do not believe that Jesus is God, nor do they believe that God ever chose to come down to earth in a form of a man to die for our sins, to purify us and forgive us. Muslims do not believe that our sins can be paid for by the suffering and death of Jesus. In fact, they don't believe Jesus died at all. They say that Jesus' enemies thought they killed him, but were fooled by appearances. Islam says Jesus didn't really die, but went directly to heaven. So he didn't die to pay sins for the sins of others, and he didn't conquer death by rising again, because he didn't die. And of course, this contradicts what the Bible says, which says in Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When Islam denies that Jesus died on the cross to pay for the people's sins, it rejects God's greatest gift of life, eternal life. And their God is not our God. Islam bases eternal life on how good a person can be, not knowing how loving God is. A Muslim seeks eternal life by working for it, and not by trusting Jesus Christ to provide free forgiveness through his death and eternal life through his power and his resurrection from the dead. And now if people are saved by being good enough and deserving it, then it's necessary, then it's necessary to deny that people are born into a powerful grip of sin. Christianity teaches that we're born sinners, all of us. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. But Islam denies that. Christianity teaches that even biblical heroes of faith were sinners who did some terrible things. That's what the Bible teaches us. But Islam, they don't believe that the prophets sinned. The Bible reports Noah got drunk, that Abraham lied, that David committed adultery and murder. And, uh, but, but, but Islam denies such serious sins were ever committed by the prophets of God. The Bible, however, tells the truth about our human nature and doesn't cover up the faults of humans Knowing that we needed to be saved, God provided the answer in his son, Jesus Christ. And people are 
are saved not by being good. And this is what the Bible teaches, but by repenting and trusting God through Jesus Christ to forgive their sins. That's how we're saved. And uh, Islam prefers the idea that we have the ability through our own efforts to do what's necessary to have eternal life. A, mi- a Muslim uh, uh, submits to the five pillars of Islam, and I, and I have a screen for that. And, uh, and, and uh, they are declare that there's no God except Allah, whose prophet is Muhammad, to pray five times each day. And I wish Christians would do that to our God. To give to the poor. I'm glad this church is very generous to give the people in need to the poor. To fast each year during the month of Ramadan. Fasting is good. And if possible, go on a pilgrimage to Mecca, which is a city that Muhammad established Islam. And Islam teaches that if a Muslim observes these five pillars faithfully and submits to the many rules and regulations in the Quran, he can earn entrance into heaven. And according to Islam, humans are not born into sin. They don't need to be saved. They just need the guidance of Islamic law on what they must do to measure up so that they can meet the requirements for heaven. And of course, those of you that know the Bible know that totally contradicts what Christianity and the Bible teaches us. That you cannot earn your salvation. That it's a gift from God. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. That God out of His love sent His Son. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believed in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. In Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for it's by grace You've been saved through faith. It's not from yourself. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And then the last thing, very short, that I want you to see in, in the deep differences and something that Christianity uh, has is, is the word love, love, living in love. Christianity differs greatly from Islam on how to receive eternal life and how to relate to other people and to God. And, uh, and, and, and they go all the way back to the difference between Jesus when he was on earth and Muhammad when he was on earth. The Bible tells a story about a woman caught in adultery. You remember it? Brought to Jesus. And some men wanted to stone her. But Jesus spared her life and told her, go now and leave your life of sin. And he forgives her. Contrast that with the Muslim account of a woman who came to Muhammad after getting pregnant through adultery. Muhammad treated her decently until she gave birth. Then he had her stoned to death. True. Jesus and Muhammad were very different, and they gained a following in very different ways. Christianity, through history, is rooted in the love of Christ, who chose to lay down his life and pay for the sins of others rather than destroying sinners. Christ's mission was not to kill, but to give life, but to die that we might have life. He died, took our place. And in the first three centuries after his resurrection, Jesus' followers spread his message by preaching and persuading and loving, not by force. Muhammad, on the other hand, and you can read it in history, did not establish Islam through peaceful persuasion or by laying down his life. Muhammad used military means to conquer Arabia. And after his death, Islam spread to other countries through military conquest. And this doesn't mean that all Christians in history have been peaceful or kind uh, or that all Muslims, of course, have been cruel or warlike. It's just not true. There's some damn things done in the name of Christ that just make me cringe. And I could talk a lot about that through history. Both are sad. But Jesus' methods were clearly different from Muhammad's. The difference continues to be felt in the way that many countries with a biblical background, enjoy our freedom, while those that emphasize Islamic law have less freedom of religion, less freedom of speech, and almost no freely elected governments. Christianity and Islam also have significant differences in the realm of marriage and family. Jesus taught that God designed marriage as a lifelong union of love between one man and one woman, and that it's wrong to divorce without just cause. And you can look at that in Matthew 19. I'm not going to read it. Verse, chapter 19. The Bible tells husbands to love their wives enough to die for them. That's, that's significant, isn't it? As Christ also died for us, for our sins at the church. But Islamic law, on the other hand, allows men to beat their wives. A man 
can have up to four wives, and if a man divorces one of his wives, he gets to keep the kids. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean most Muslims don't do that. It doesn't mean that Muslims are wife beaters or polygamists or that all people who claim to be Christians have ideal marriages either or respect their wives or that if you're a Christian, you don't treat your wife like she's your object because Christians do that and it's wrong. And there's been wrong teaching in the church about what it means for the man to be the head of the wife that has created a lot of abuse. But there's a big difference between Christian teaching on marriage and the Muslim teaching on marriage. Religious worldviews can affect government structures and family relationships, but nowhere is the impact of the religious differences more profound than a way that man relates to God. The God of Islam is mainly a master, as as I understand it, who deals with his servants on the basis of whether they follow his rules. The God of Christianity is the great king, and for all who trust him, uh, God is also a father and a friend, savior, and uh, he paid a huge sacrifice for our sins, that he loves us. And Christians, as Christians, we must approach God with reverence and awe, and we ought to be willing to obey, and there is what God has given us, his commands. But we can pray with him to confidence. And we can know that he is with us and his spirit abides with us. God's not just a supreme monarch somewhere far above us. God's a close companion. He, companion. he lives among us and in us. In Jesus, by his Holy Spirit, he dwells in us and lives in us. And that makes possible this intimate relationship, this warmness that we have with Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, it's different than that which follows Islam or in their religion and Allah as their God. It's a total different thing. Musicians, I'm going to ask you to come. In pointing out some differences between Christian, Christianity and Islam, I don't want to add any fuel to the flames that I'm not trying to insult either. I don't want to I, I don't want any spread any hatred. I don't want to spread any fear. In fact, I, I'm just actually the, the, the motive of this is actually the opposite. To have an understanding But I want to make clear that the God of Muhammad is not the father of Jesus Christ. So what's our response? Do you trust the God of love, the God of triune nature, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose very being has been loved from all eternity? Will you receive the gift of eternal life from him by trusting him and his son Jesus who suffered poured out his life for us as sinners do you believe Jesus died on that cross shed his blood his life blood gave his life to pay the penalty for my sin that I wouldn't pay my penalty he died he took my penalty of sin he took death and that Jesus Christ is the way of salvation the Bible says there's no other way no other name by which we can be saved than the name of Jesus he is Jesus Messiah He is the name above all names. He's beautiful Savior. He's glorious Lord. And I believe with every fiber in me what this book has to say. And I think it really helps us to be able to lovingly speak and share with people of Muslim faith when we understand our differences and we're able to say, yes, God has commands. But here's how God loves. And when I talk to missionaries, what draws Muslims to convert from Islam to Christianity is the fact that our God is one of love, and they understand that. And so many times I hear stories that I don't understand uh, of, of the way people are treated, and they, they realize that. And I don't know it all. I, I, don't, I don't know all of it, but I, I did want to share this part. I, I felt like that in our culture, in our time, guys, that honestly, there's, there's such a, a divide in hatred and fear and unwarranted that we, we need to address it. And I'm, I'm glad it's online and you can tell people about it. And if you've heard me insult anybody, I've not meant to insult any Muslim or agnostic 
are those who are searching, maybe they're ag agnostic would be like sure, searching, atheists who just don't believe. I'm not insulting Buddhists uh, or anybody. I'm just saying that I truly believe with everything within me that Jesus Christ truly is God the Son. And he is the one only true way, no other name. How many of you join me and say, I believe that too? Amen. And how many would join me in saying, I want to pray for any Muslim I ever meet. And when I meet them, I want to look into their eyes and see there's a precious soul right there, a beautiful person who I can love in God. I can love them, care about them, and show them with my hands, with my eyes, with my words, with my tone, everything about me, that God is a God of love and he offers his son Jesus as Savior. Amen. Can we declare in closing who Jesus is? And can I ask you, because I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or anything like that, but can I ask you, if you're at a point where you're ready to make Jesus Christ the one that you trust in and you believe, to ask him to forgive your sin and make him Messiah 